You've reached Hall in Mockery. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Colin Mockery. Uh, hi. Mockery, the show that you tune into every week, and without fail, we bring it to you every week, of course. Yes. And just like this drink I just popped, warning, content's under pressure. Because <laughs> we are we got some stuff we got to talk about. Pressure. <laughs> Change one note, and it's a different song. <laughs> Can't get us for that one. Doom, 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 doom. If you could pick one classic rock song to turn into a rap about being a white person, yes. what would it be? Um, probably back in black. Yeah, I was gonna say um, every rose has its thorn. Yeah, because thorn is like a nickname a white guy would give to his white friend. That's thorn. That's Billy. We grew up together, and that's my neighbor, Thorn. Yeah. We've been through thick and thin together. Thick mud, thin mud. <laughs> I was like, oh, why do you call him Thorn? Sharp pecker. We have a lot to talk about. A lot of stuff. We've been under a lot of pressure recently, yeah. so we need to talk about it. It is, yeah, there's a couple things we need to get off our chest. First thing, it is this dang shirt. Oh, Doom, 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 dippy, doom, doom. Ice, ice, lady. That falls under parody law. So one, number one is parody law is rules. Parody law is rules to me. Two, even though he's okay, it is too soon to start saying uh, Jeremy ran over. <laughs> and three, make blue stews. Make, <laughs> make blues clues, Steve, again. Yep. He's at every convention answering the same question. Make it Steve again. Just do it. And Clearly I he's got actually Hold on, I have to make my hat taller for this. <laughs> and I actually well blue is animated. So it's hard to act with blue. Blue was a girl dog the whole time. No Did one told me that? until season three. <laughs> I was calling him a good boy. And I called it I called it handsome the whole time. And then I got in trouble because I said, is she beagle? They thought I said, is she legal? <laughs> and then the pink dog that comes over sometimes. Yeah. Boy. I mean, this woke garbage has been pushed down our craw since the beginning of time. You think it time. just started now? Huh? Guess what? The rainbow's always been creeping up behind us. <laughs> oh. No, I that's just my neighbor, Biff. Oh. Hey, Biff. <laughs> We, nah. first off, you know, on a certain interstate when you're driving uh, one way, or actually, the, I think it's on both ways. When you're driving on the interstate, there's a sign. Now, you might not be local to here, and that's okay. Yeah. Because you might have something similar to this. There's, this is not just for our local yokels. No. You might, have, <laughs> you might have something similar to this where there is a little joke of the day on the on a billboard just to brighten everyone's morning. Yeah. Do you know what I'm talking about here? Yeah. You drive on the interstate from one I city to another. I thought you were talking about the thing that said to buckle up, and I was like, it's not really a joke. Well, sometimes that is a joke, and you're like, <laughs> maybe let's cool it with that. Yeah. Five 5,000 <laughs> casualties this year. <laughs> and then it, the next slide is like, hi, Barbie, hi, can you please, <laughs> please buckle, buckle up? up. <laughs> like, all right, come on. <laughs> 6,000 people have de died <laughs> this year from not buckling their buckle. <sighs> all right. Yeah, so we, so there's a, so there's, a, and this is going to be confusing lo <laughs> logically to follow if you're not local. No. But this, the, the joke sign mm -hmm. is the sign is a, the, the, how do I put this? The company makes signs. <laughs> the sign that has a daily joke is on a sign also promoting the company that makes signs. This it's not 
mm-hmm. the movie. No. Well, the other day we were driving past this sign, and usually it's like, why does a duck quack? Mm. And then it's like, because it can't do anything else or something like that. You know, usually it's just a kind of a a tame it's the thing that kid you, joke. Yeah, it's whatever you'd get in. A, it's it's similar to a Laffy Taffy or a ta- yeah. some sort of good humor. Snapple Tapple. Popple Topple that you'd get at the old um, uh, swimming pool. Yeah. So usually it's one of those, yeah, where it's like I don't know what's a what's one what's a real one like. Uh, Why is the draft's neck so long? Why? Because the it to reach the leaves. <laughs> okay, that's a snapple cap. Yeah, and that's a f- true fact. Under it, it says evolution's real. Real. So wokeness has been creeping up behind us once again. Okay, so I wrote this one down because usually oh, wait, I got one. Okay, why do gorillas have big nostrils? Careful. No, wait. Why do why do gorillas have big fingers? Big <laughs> to pick their big nostrils. <laughs> okay. You might have heard that one before. <laughs> <laughs> no, but usually it's like, why did the why did the melon take his girlfriend to Vegas? Uh, Bologna. <laughs> <laughs> or wait, no. Why did the why didn't the melon take his girlfriend melon to Vegas? Why they can't elope? Mm-hmm. It, something like that. Okay. Yeah. So that's that's u- usually a tame one like that. So I wrote this down though. We were driving by, and I saw I saw the punchline before I saw the thing, and I was like, "Hmm." And then it, so <laughs> I, so we drove slow, and I looked at it, and it says, "Why do squirrels swim on their back?" Why do squirrels swim on their back? Um, to protect their nuts, to keep their nuts dry. <laughs> I said, "Whoa, that seems a little uh that seems a little risqué for the family-friendly joke sign." That's not even a joke. No, it's just true. It's just that's like, a snapple cap. Because what because yes, they have nuts, but <laughs> yeah. Why did this swim on their back? It's yeah. It's kind of nasty and dirty. That's and just a gross joke. They're turning my kids against me. <laughs> because they're telling them that squirrels have nuts. To keep their nuts dry. That's disgusting. Yeah, it's disgusting, but it is funny. You know how old people now, you say, Mel Brooks, tell me a joke. And he's like, two guys are down by the river. One of them is wearing sheet metal. And he goes into this five-minute thing. Yeah. If anyone asks, our our grandchildren go, Kippa, Kippa. Yeah. Tell me a joke. You're like, all right, let's see. Why did the melon, why couldn't the melon take his Vegas. melon bride to Vegas? Fiance. Fiance to Vegas. That's the joke you would tell them. All these old guys are always like, oh, then there's the one about, you know, they're. Two prime ministers meet in the back mm-hmm. of a taxi cab. One's on his way to Istanbul. The other one's on his way back home to Canada. Mm-hmm. And you're like, ugh. And I said, kiss you. I shouldn't even be doing this. Yeah. The punchline is something you have to know what Eisenhower stood mm. for to get it. You're like, well, I don't know what Eisenhower stood for. It's everything is so. And if it's Roosevelt. Evil, yeah. He didn't stand for anything. No. He was the one that was in the chair, <laughs> right? He was the one that was in, it was in the chair. What was ta- What was how? What was. um. What was uh, President Taft's favorite song? <laughs> Rub a dub dub. <laughs> Tub thumper. <laughs> okay, this is good. Um, what? Okay, hold on. This is good. Some presidential humor, and then we can get into what we really want to talk about. Yeah. What was? I'm waiting. Now you've got cold feet. What? (laughs) Okay, this is good. What? Why were people confused 
when President Grant introduced himself on the playground. <laughs> Why? Because he he always said Ulysses is Grant. <laughs> <laughs> And they're like, what? <laughs> you really threw me off with on the playground <laughs> as if it wouldn't just be in his everyday life. No, it was when he was a kid. That's when you meet everyone you know. Yeah. Ulysses is Grant. Nice to meet you. <laughs> they're like, what? Ulysses is Grant? <laughs> uh, now it's your turn. Okay. What's, um, <laughs> which, uh, president which president had the uh-huh. which president <laughs> had uh this which president's which president had the scariest which president's <laughs> Which which president did everything right, but they indicted me. They indicted me. Which president had the scariest household? Which president's household was the scariest? scariest. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure. John Adams family. <laughs> House. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> that's good. Um, which president? This is good, right? Yeah. We didn't have anything else to talk about. I don't think so. I don't think people wanted to know about the two big movies we've been neglecting to talk about for a month. Yeah. No, we shouldn't do that. There's nothing to talk about movies wise. No. Which president, here's the issue. Mm. I've named all the ones I can think of. Well, what's the, who, do you know the president who um, keeps trying to connect with you on your professional <laughs> social media page? Uh, hmm. Was it Truman? It was President Abraham Lincoln. Oh. See, we could do like a, Sklar Brothers right. thing where you set me up and I play like an idiot. Mm -hmm. Or like a Safty Brothers where I do weird accents <laughs> that I shouldn't do and <laughs> you direct movies. It's Hungarian. Yeah, uh -huh. sure. And that's just and I okay, and that's just sunblock. <laughs> no, you're Hungarian and that's just if you're Hungarian, that's sunblock. <laughs> It did that big bit of bump. It did that bit of pickle bump. What are you saying? It did that bit of pickle bump. It did that bit of pickle bump. No one thought of that. The guy eating orange <laughs> slices was like, "What? You can make a bigger one?" <gasps> all right, should we talk about it? Uh, all right. So I saw Asteroid City a couple months ago. Yeah. How was it? Yeah. It's about there's a there's an atom bomb in it. Is there really? I won't lie to you. I went and saw it, and I kind of did one of these. I turned to the person next to me, and I said, I "Guess I don't need to see Oppenheimer." <laughs> and they said, "Shh, <laughs> shh." Yeah. So, shh. I'm trying to make a TikTok of the screen. <laughs> I'm trying to get a quick shot of when she's nude in the PG-13 movie. By the way, a guy at my work the other Full day. Full frontal, huh? Yep. Um, just like Howard uh, Stern. Yeah. Um, I was trying to film something at work, and this guy was talking to two of his coworkers, and he was like, well, it's weird that Oppenheimer's, he was saying how it's weird that Oppenheimer is rated R. And I'm not, I'm not supposed to be talking to them, so I was just kind of like, why aren't you supposed to be talking to them? Because I'm supposed to be filming them talk to each oh, other. Oh, right. Oh, as like B-roll? Yes, mis au sound. Yes. Like one of the softies would say. Yes. So they're talking, and they're not mis supposed to sound. look at me. I'm not supposed to be there. You're a fly on the wall. I'm a fly on the wall, and the guy- David! <laughs> Let me do something for you, partner. Let me care about 
I love your Trump. It's a little bit better than my Trump. I'm the biggest Trump. Excuse me. I'm the biggest Trump. Dana, don't say that. <laughs> Dana, be careful. You shouldn't be saying this stuff. Should I do Obama? Dana. Should I do Obama for Chris Rock? <laughs> All right, so we're going to go to break. Dana, so, <laughs> wait, don't. <laughs> this guy says to these two other people, he goes, I'm not really sure why it was rated R. And now if you've seen the movie, you know why. Yeah, and I won't tell you if I have I won't tell you, yet. but I'm going to now. Mm -hmm. He goes, I mean, there's, well, she goes, one of the ladies goes, well, isn't it because of the nudity? <laughs> yeah. And he goes, well, just boobs. <laughs> and they both stared at him. And he's like, but there's boobs in PG-13 movies. What have you, you've only seen Airplane? And I was like, that's what I was like, <laughs> before they invented other ratings yeah. 50 years ago? What are you talking about? Oh, God. You're that's awesome. twice my age and half as smart. Twice my age and half my wit. And guess what? If he listens to this, I'm fired. <laughs> but I made this story up. <laughs> Legally. Yeah. Legal beagle. No, I've got it on tape. So that was a little confusing for me. And then um, the the woman said, well, she goes, have you seen Barbie yet? Mm -hmm. And he said, yeah, I've seen Barbie. And uh, she goes, well, what did you think? And he says it was good. And she said, yeah, I mean, it was good, but it's it was all right, but it's triggering a lot of men. And um, one of them was my husband. <laughs> it was just the most awkward th thing I've had to film. This guy <sighs> talking to his coworkers about boobs. Yeah. And how they're not, that's not nudity. That's no big deal. <laughs> I was like, and it's not even just that. Yeah. If you've seen the movie. No, there's... Tons of other stuff that probably aren't suitable for. <laughs> I mean, Long not that guys. much stuff, I guess. It's really just the boobs. Well, there's a one scene that's. Well, yeah, of course, but. So, I saw Asteroid City. Right. Boobs in that. Yep. But that's PG-13, so exception proves the rule, I guess. It's because it's so quick. Bloop. It's a bloop. It's a it's a joke. You're supposed to go. Yeah, I don't actually think objectifying women is a f funny joke, so. <laughs> it was an empowering moment, so you go. <laughs> and Wes Anderson's like. I didn't mean to do that. Could you please, could you please, could you please make it on the screen? <laughs> so is that a good movie? Should I check it out? If, By the way, I hate Wes Anderson. If you're not a Wes Anderson fan, it's not doing him any favors. <laughs> Do you know how he has his thing that he does? Yeah. And then it kind of got to peak, I'd say, his best thing. Tenenbaums. Mm. No, that's his worst. When he gets to Grand Budapest Hotel. Right. You say, all right. That's it. He's done it. He's He's got the most him that he can be. Mm -hmm. And it's a good movie. Mm -hmm. And then I haven't seen French Dispatch, but then he's does, he does a second animated film, Isle of Dogs. Right. And I went... I'm not so sure about this. And then he does. And then this is at the point where SNL has done the ultimate parody thing. Yeah. Where they do the midnight coterie of midnight intruders or whatever the F they called it. Yeah. With Alec Baldwin. Right. And you go, okay, so you can mimic what he's doing. Right. Right. French dispatch comes out. Everyone says, all right, I still haven't seen it yet because I want to see asteroid city. And it got to the point where I said, I'm just going to see this first because I'm more excited to see well, it's, this one. They don't ma it doesn't matter, right? No, I just meant I kind of want to see the one that I want to see and not be bummed out right. by the one that everyone says is just whatever. Because it's a lot of the same <sighs> yeah. stuff that he does. So I don't want to watch the French Dispatch and be like, ah, and then have to go see Asteroid City and not be excited. As excited, yeah. But... The guy's his own worst enemy because it's so much what he does still yeah. that he just won't let up from it. He can't. And there is so much unnecessary stuff about the movie where the main story is good and interesting and the way it's shot is good. And it's one of his more funny ones that I've seen in a while. Mm -hmm. It's very funny. But then the little... I, there are things he does in all his movies that it's yeah. it's starting to get... It's too twee. 
To the point where it's annoying. It's aesthetic for aesthetic sake, isn't it? Yes. Because there's a whole second story wrapped up in the main story Uh that I'm like, it detracted from the entire thing for me. Yeah, interesting. Hmm. Where I'm like, you don't need that. You've made the movie. Like, I would have much rather spent those extra 30 minutes with the main story Mm. and not have it wrapped up in this other thing. Sure. And I get it. It gives you a chance to put whatever Brian Cranston in it <laughs> and whoever else. That's the other thing. He'll just, it's just, it's just people. It's just people that, you know, yeah. If you're not a fan of him, like I said, it's not going to you much. You would be better to go back to his earlier stuff. Yeah. But the weight shot is great, but it was sort of like, well, what was the point of all this? I will say it's the it's the first one I've actually wanted to watch in a while, just based on the trailer. Like it seems interesting, but I also have heard similar things to that, and I've always kind of felt like that, which is fine. Like that's what he does; he does it well. Whatever, keep doing your thing. You don't necessarily have to reinvent yourself every time, but it is like when people. And I, I swear to God, this is the last time I bring it up, but people do the AI f- trailers of like, if Wes Anderson did <laughs> Star Wars yeah, and it looks like if Wes Anderson did Star Wars and then the other, the quote tweets about it are, are of like people who are just willfully ignorant of uh, what's happening around us mm-hmm. are like, if you didn't show me that you don't know what Wes Anderson is doing without telling me you don't know what Wes Wes Anderson is doing. It's like, okay, well then explain it. What's he doing? (laughs) What's the, what's actually the artistic point? Cause you do it once. If that's really like, this is what I'm saying about the human psyche and blah, blah, blah. Okay. Maybe, maybe once, maybe twice, but every single time it's the same sort of, this is why, I mean, and I think this might be why I like, have you seen any of his movies? Yeah. Which one? Yeah. Go ahead and do that. (laughs) Just getting a little dark cloud coverage. What? We're inside for the first time in a while. So, oh, the sun's going to come back out. It's going to be too bright. Um, hmm? We'll shut the shades. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. Royal Tenenbaums, which uh, pissed me off when <laughs> the guy says, I'm going to kill myself tomorrow and then kills yeah. himself then or tries to. I've looked. Have you looked at, into that, why he says that? And it was like. <laughs> I bring it up all the time. To oh, we you. have talked about yeah. this because like, it's a reference to something <laughs> yeah. else. And it's like, but why it, say that? <laughs> that doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. So I was with the movie mm-hmm. up until that point when he does that. I was like. I, that's, and then you told me that about it and I was like I hate it even more it's funny that <laughs> it makes you so mad it doesn't make sense and when I watch it it is one of those like okay like I, I don't is it saying something about the state he's in whatever we don't need to get into that my favorite of his is probably to me it's pre- pretension it's mm-hmm. pretentious aesthetic for the sake of it it's like but I don't think it's like saying infinite jest is your favorite book when it's uh, you know everyone on earth knows that it's not i think at some point it was the reason people liked it yeah or because they've never seen it before you know i don't know how pretentious it was at the time but to keep doing it yeah kind of what you're saying i think at this point when he's done it so much that it's like well i thought it was i thought there was a reason to do it for that story yeah and maybe this other one Mm -hmm. but then when you're on asteroid city and you're still doing the same like insert of a script and then insert of a play into asteroid city and you start going why does he do this all that like (laughs) it's not adding anything to these stories it's just his thing he does yeah and it just adds a layer a bunch of layers of stuff that don't need to be there which that's I that's why I like Life Aquatic probably the most. I, there's really yeah. none of that. Darjeeling Limited's good. Life Aquatic's good. Uh, Fantastic Mr. Fox is good. Yeah. Uh, Grand Budapest, but that's where he got the most. Like, here's where I can do whatever I want. Yeah. 
Well, and there's there is something like kind of self-referential at this point about it, where like you said, like the parodies have become as good as what he's doing to the point where it's like it's not funny to even talk about right. it anymore, and we shouldn't be spending this much time on it. But like, but but it still doesn't seem and. I know. I've just admitted I haven't seen any of these movies, so I'm just speaking out of my asshole. But it just doesn't seem like it's for a reason. Like, you're pointing out the artifice of the film in front of our eyes, mm. but for what? Yeah. I don't know. It makes me a little mad when I, for the most part, have stuck up for... I said, I like these films. I know a lot of people, are <sighs> when they see them, they act like they've never seen a film before. <laughs> But I'm like, I like them for what they are. Yeah. But then you get through Asteroid City and it's kind of like, well, what what was this for? There's some great performances in it. Yeah. I'll say this. I, I hope that he continues to do his thing forever. I don't, I'm not mad at him. I just feel like I would want something more. If I, if I was super into it, I think I would be over it by now. Well, that's the thing. It's yeah. like you're getting the same album every time. Luckily, I knew from the from the get-go that it was just a bunch of bullshit. So, <laughs> yep. I've been right all along about everything. Mm. And you're going to watch his Road Doll thing on mm. Netflix? He's doing a new movie. They say. Oh, yeah. About the... Thing, how do people do stuff so fast, though? The French dispatch this, and then he does this road doll thing for Netflix. Yeah. Let's glorify an anti Semite. Wes Anderson? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I did have a point to make. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, That's a first. Oh, I'm sorry. Come on. Now you made me forget it. No. No. What was my point, though? Oh, I did see a new Wes Anderson AI thing that was like, Wes Anderson's Lord of the Rings will blow you away. And it was a yeah. picture of, it was just a picture of Bill Murray as Gandalf. Yeah. <laughs> I just thought of you. <laughs> it was so funny because the way the article was written was like, it was real. Yeah. The headline was like, Wes Anderson's Lord of the Rings. It's like, it's just Bill Murray. They just put Bill Murray and put <laughs> Bill Murray as Gandalf. In the it's center of the frame. people that he works with. with yeah. But that's what's funny because that's what he would do. <laughs> like it, it's accurate. It's stupid to yeah. waste your time doing this, but also it is accurate to what would have happened. I just, if that I think he's a true. good filmmaker. That's why of you, course. I, I want him that's to what, do. Keep doing your thing. That, uh, if that's all he wants to do, great. But I don't it's care. It's not going to keep me interested as much. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've reached the moment. Ladies and gentlemen, we're gathered here today to ask you one thing. Did you Barbenheimer as hard as I Barbenheimered? And if you did, check yes. If you didn't, tell Robbie I think his shirt is ugly. And if what? you're us. <laughs> Uh, it just be, it became a little note that you pass her along in elementary school, like something no, like right. Ulysses, Ulysses is Grant might pass to a girl that he likes. Mm. Did you do you like me? Check yes or no. And if you don't check yes, I'm gonna tell Robbie his shirt is ugly. So why does Robbie have to get thrown in? Robbie's it? always involved. Yeah, we all know one. Mm-hmm. They're always involved in everything yeah. when you don't want them to mm. be. Put their hands in your hair. They have sticky fingers. You say, get out of here. Everybody has a Robbie. Mm -hmm. And every Robbie's got a body, too. Hey, uh, what president is a huge fan of, of Alabama and always is saying, roll tide? Who? Oh, Obama. <laughs> uh, oh, 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 oh. All right, we'll talk to you next week. Should we? No. Okay. <laughs> we don't have anything else to record. Okay.
Go ahead. Okay, this is it. The moment you've waited for. The movies came out three weeks ago. You've waited. What's the hot take? At this point, in the, at this point I'm going to say, if you haven't seen Barbie and you haven't seen Oppenheimer, you can turn this off. Turn it off. Because we're going to be spoiling the movies. Yeah. We're not going to... This isn't a full review. No. We just want you to understand... Should that, we? We could. <laughs> should we do a? Should we turn it off it now just and just too do, late though? Yeah, we could. Just a Barbenheimer special. All right, we'll just talk about both of them in one special. Okay. Bye. Bye. <laughs>